A journalist and dance critic, Elizabeth Schweizer, joins me today on Viewpoints. Uh, welcome, Elizabeth, to the program and also to Sri Lanka. Now, tell us a little bit about what you do in California. I work as a dance critic and a journalist for a weekly newspaper based in Santa Barbara, California, which is about two hours north of Los Angeles. Um, so I cover dance pretty exclusively in my city. There isn't really anybody else who interviews artists, attends dance productions, and publishes reviews, and also features stories and interviews with dance artists, both based in my community and artists from all over the world who tour through my city. And what made you take up such a profession? The profession? Uh, I've always loved to dance. I began dancing when I was three years old and danced consistently all through my childhood and young life and became a professional dancer. Um, in my 20s. So I danced professionally actually in the UK where I was living at the time for a couple of years and ended up returning to California with a real interest in articulating for the public what matters about dance, uh, why dance is important and crucial to our culture. And I found that not many people do that very well. You have to be a body and a mind person. You have to be somebody who understands language and likes to work with language. Um, but who also has some kind of background in the arts and in dance. So I, I slipped into a little niche that fits me well back in the community where I grew up in California. Now during your stay here, have you had the opportunity to witness traditional Sri Lankan dance? And if so, what was your impression? I have. Um, I've been really lucky to witness a range of dance here. Um, so in Colombo, I've spent I think three times now I've visited Titrasena and Vajira's dance studio. Um, Coincidentally, Heshma, the granddaughter of Chitrasena, and I attended university together and studied dance. So I didn't know that until I got back here. It was a really amazing coincidence. And I've spent a, a series of sessions watching their class and taking part in class. Uh, and I hope one day to see them on tour. But I've also spent time in Colombo with Chana and Upali and watched rehearsal and participated in rehearsal with them. Um, and then outside of Colombo, I've had the opportunity to see uh, more folk dance, traditional Candian dance at a cultural center in Wariapola. Um, and actually last night back in Colombo, I attended a ballet recital. So I've seen a range of work here. How important do you think is artistic studies in a school curriculum? I think it's absolutely crucial. I think the arts are an expression of our humanity and in an increasingly fast-paced international culture where young people are dealing with a vast influx of information minute to minute, and all people are, um, we're speeding up increasingly and the arts are kind of a call, um, a signal to return to what is essential and what is universal about the human experience. I think without uh, some kind of foundation in dance, in theater, in the visual arts or in the literary arts, we're not producing full members of society. Um, there's no full acknowledgement of what it means to be human if you don't return to that kind of expression. And in Sri Lanka, your cultural traditions are so rich because of the crossing of different cultures, you know, from the Portuguese to the Dutch to the English and the indigenous cultures here. Um, there's such wealth in what you have in the arts um, I know Sri Lanka is very proud of what they have and I also think this country in particular can do a lot to keep supporting and sustaining what's happening here. Now being a part of the Rotary Global Exchange program and having visited Sri Lanka, what kind of message would you want to give others who may be interested in the program itself and also to those who show an interest in visiting Sri Lanka? Well, I, I applied to be part of this program in part because I've long had a dream to study dance internationally and to learn more about what cultures around the world do for dance forms, you know, outside of America. Um, and it's been such an enriching experience for me. And I think both learning about the particular nature of your dance traditions here um, and having to practice these really different forms of how to use the body, but also acknowledging that there's a universality to dance in particular, that uh, it is a language, but it's a language that's accessible to people anywhere in the world. Um, there's something very powerful about the expression of the body, right? So we don't have to know Sinhala or Tamil or English or French or Portuguese or any particular language to access 
the expression of desire, the expression of sorrow, the kinds of things the body can articulate. So for me, as a dancer and a dance writer, to get to witness something very different from the tradition that I grew up in, and yet very accessible that speaks to the human experience has been wonderful. I would recommend it, of course, to anybody in the arts and anybody in journalism to travel internationally and in whatever your field is to get a taste of both the differences in different cultures and the similarities.